So I started counterclockwise on my Legion rotation. So that led me to Val Shara for my second zone. And it's kind of the home of the Druids, right? Especially the Night Elf Druids and the World Tree is over here as well. So the whole quest line through Val Shara is to stop the spread of the Emerald Nightmare. Sonarius's loss has left Malfurion unable to see reason. Make haste to the World Tree. He may be headed there, all too ready to take reckless risks. So this character, Xavius, has come here to try to spread this Emerald Nightmare. And he has like some previous history with some of the characters that are residing here now. And I guess the whole gimmick is they're trying to get to this artifact that if we get to the artifact first, we can kind of reverse the Emerald Nightmare and turn this zone back into like that lush, thick forest that it normally was. But if Xavius and the Legion get to it first, then they can continue to turn the entire forest and corrupt it into the Emerald Nightmare. So this dragon shows up to help you out, which is really kind of how you're introduced to this whole storyline, or at least for me. And because Xavius got the artifact first, he was able to use it on the dragon and turn her into his ally. So this whole scene is very similar to like the end of Game of Thrones season seven, where the Night King turns the dragon into like his ally. I don't know which one came out first, but they're very similar. The corruption is thick here. What is that across the bridge? This zone is really cool. I really enjoyed my time here. This was not as monotonous and linear as the zone before this, right? This one was varied. There's a ton of different stuff going on. The story is complex and layered. And a lot of these interesting characters as well. But there was a ton of players here too. And the only thing I can assume is like, there's a lot of quest density here. There's all these bonus objectives. Like, man, you would walk just to the next, like not loading screen, but just to the next little area and boom, there's a new bonus objective. And then there were several of like these, they're not world bosses, but the the large mobs that are running rolling around in the area. And I mean, there was just a ton of stuff going on here. Greetings, friend. Yes again, mortal. <laughs> Kudos to whoever did the writing for this zone because it really was well done. There's like an underlying conservation theme here too, and that's something that's fairly close to my heart, so I can appreciate that. That may have like endeared this whole zone to me a little bit more. Your adoring husband will be joining me in the nightmare. His was a special invitation. And our dear ye Sarah, would you believe she's had a change of heart? She will aid me in my conquest of Valshara, starting with your precious temple of Alun. Such a dilemma, High Priestess. Kneel beside your beloved as he draws his final breath, or watch the temple of your goddess burn. So I went on the mother of all side quests here. I decided to go back to town to check the auction house, get some rested XP, and buy some new portal spells. And I noticed I had an invitation to go talk to Sylvanas. And I knew as soon as she started talking what this was about. I the services of one whom I can trust completely. To win this war, the Horde needs allies. So this is like the start to BFA, I think, but it's one of my favorite missions and quest lines in all of World of Warcraft. It's just fun. And I think it's fun because like there's so many main characters involved in this story and it like directly progresses the overall like narrative of World of Warcraft. Listen closely. We will not be in contact once we have entered So the idea Stormwind. here is you're going to go infiltrate Stormwind into the stockades and free some political prisoners. 
that are either already allies of the Horde or they're pretty much going to be and it was kind of known that they were going to be and Sylvanas was using this as like the, the way to here. cement that relationship we breaking out the humans not be taking chances but while you're down there you run across Sarafang as well brother of Broxigar to die today on the field of I have lost track of the time I have sat in this cell but it matters not in the end after all she has done I will never return to her horde. Make sure. You I don't know a whole lot about him. I, I'm a new player, right? So I haven't got a, like years of history with him. I want to know more. He seems like a super interesting character. I like the fact that he chose honor over loyalty, and he still has love for the horde, but he does not have love for her. And because he doesn't have love for her, his love for the horde is reduced. It's it's a really cool dynamic there. It's unexpected. That would be a mistake. It is the other way. The rest of the mission plays out like the great escape, right? Like you got to get back to the water so that you can get back with these allies. And like the Alliance's most powerful people will come to stop you. So you really don't know how it's gonna play out. We are hey, 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 don't be running off. Hey, move quick. Okay. What I say about doing something stupid? Let's cross at the bridge. Yeah, unless your prophet be having a problem with that. Do not worry. We will know if his life is in danger. I really like that they showed Jaina as powerful here, right? They didn't do it cheesy. You know, they recognize, hey, we can't fight her. We need to get out of here. So it really sets the tone for like the Sylvanas versus Jaina conflict that's, you know, kind of evolving through BFA. You will not harm another soul in this city. Slain many innocents to get this far. Surrender, and I will return you to the stockades where you belong. There, you will await the king's justice. Respectfully, we have a boat to catch. Then perish. Do not be so hasty, though. You can try to subdue us and likely succeed. But do you have time to waste? No, it can't be. Seems a mage of your skill could be very useful right now. Hmm? This isn't over. I gotta say, I'm not a huge fan of the princess here. She's too much of a Mary Sue and it doesn't play out as well as even Sylvanas's or Lady Proudmoore, any of them, right? Like hers is like super weird. It's just like, oh, well, you can just do whatever you need to do whenever you need to do it. Because why didn't she use any of these powers when they were escaping? It's just, I'm not a fan of the character design on her. I like this mission. I understand they needed to do something dramatic here, but I just felt like maybe they could have done something a little less cheesy. The whole idea is you get to this town and you start to establish like a horde footprint into this world. So essentially you call the horde and then they come in and now we have a foothold into this you know continent here with that being done i decided to go back and finish up my quest line in val Shara. Z 
I guess what's going on here is the roots of that tree have spread throughout the zone, and everywhere they spread, like the nightmare and the corruption comes with them. Ah, oh, Malfurion, my beloved. When Malfurion returned to my side, we worked as one, as if he had never been away. Have you ever loved as I have? So it kind of culminates here in this battle against Ysera. It's different than that Game of Thrones dragon because Ysera is like conscious, sort of, or at least she has the ability to speak. So it makes it the dynamic a little bit different where you, you kind of feel bad because you don't want to fight her. And while you're fighting her, she actually puts up a good argument as to like why she is how she is now. So it doesn't feel like, oh, she's just been corrupted, even though you know that's what's going on. So they did a really good job of like creating that conflict in you of fighting her, even though, you know, at least I don't know this character very well. So when you finally kill her, you reclaim the Tears of Illum, which is that artifact that you were seeking before. I really like the symbology there. It's a visual story. They don't tell you directly in that scene what happens. I really like how they ended it there. And since they ended that so well there, I'm going to end this vlog here. Stay tuned for vlog number five, which I'm hoping will take me all the way up to level 50. We'll see. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.